Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Ryan with From Corners Unknown. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, a number of weeks ago, I had the immense pleasure of speaking with Proto U. Some of you folks may know her as Sasha. Uh, she debuted on the Cryo Chamber label back in 2015 with Drani Darko, and together they put out an album uh, named Earth Songs. Since that album's release, Sasha has been extremely busy and quite prolific in a lot of the work she's been putting out on the Cryo Chamber label. She's put out a handful of solo releases since Earth Songs and has forged a number of collaborative efforts with artists on the label. Her most recent record, The Edge of Architecture, came out just a couple of months ago, and that actually exists in the same universe as Earth Song. It's kind of a, a sequel to that, if you will. And it's a superb and engrossing listen. It's been very enjoyable following Sasha as Proto U since the, her early beginnings um, with Earth Songs up through the edge of architecture. And in this conversation, we talk about the genesis of her project and explore more of her musical background and talk about the concepts and themes underlying the edge of architecture as well as those on her previous records and we also get a bit into her style of ambient dark ambient and drone how it differs from what you would typically expect from a musician in the dark ambient genre how she uses a lot of lush textures and a lot of deeply layered field recordings and how there tends to be a certain brightness that exudes from her compositions even though there's still that darker undercurrent bubbling beneath. I sincerely hope you folks enjoy this conversation between Sasha and myself and in just a moment I will be playing her track Gardens of the Universe and to close out the conversation, I will play her track, Airflows. As always, thank you so much for your continued support, and thank you for any and all support you can give Sasha and her Project Proto-U.
So I've been listening to your music for quite some time. I think back in like back till shoot was it 2015 <laughs> with Earth Songs, um, I believe. But but before getting into some of your project work, could we go back and kind of talk more about your background? I know that you do work or you, you used to do um, be a violinist. I don't know if you still are, um, and you were also in choir. Could you, you know, just explore that a bit and just, just talk about your musical background? Okay, no props. So, yes, I am trained violinist. When I was little, my mom decided to take me to the musical school because mm -hmm. uh, it was a great thing to do as a child uh, to train my skills. Uh, I had a beautiful voice. She thought that I had. Sure, sure. <laughs> and she brought me to the musical school where they uh, had to indicate where to put me, like violin or piano or should it be vocals. Okay. So they put me to violin and uh, also vocals. So I was uh, hmm. a choir singer and uh, it was like for a long time and really professional. I was soprano hmm. and uh, everything uh, was uh, like for eight years. Uh, it was hard, and sometimes I cried and didn't want to do it. Sure. But uh, as a result, um, I don't use violin a lot in my casual life, as my mom wanted. She wanted me to be in orchestra or something, because I see. my family has uh, this tendency to work in orchestras as violinists. Oh, okay. But I didn't want to, because like it's not my way. I'm more of a ravey person. I don't sure. like this classical stuff. It makes me so sick. Really? So, huh. Yes. Yes, uh, especially like this classical course, they um, made me understand that I don't like to uh, follow rules uh, or strict things uh, in music, especially because music is a thing uh, that um, if you let it flow like freely, mm -hmm. it's uh, the right way. If you're going stra straight to the rules, you will not uh, get to create music. You will also, always play or sing something that someone created before you. I see. I see. Yeah. And that, so I started okay. to uh, yeah, explore uh, electronic music, like electronic programs uh, from like the most primitive ones uh, to the Ableton. Okay. So, okay. This is my way. <laughs> sure. And how, how old were you when you started doing that? You... Eight years, from eight years to 16, okay. I was uh, in musical school. Okay. And uh, I started to write electronic music from the age of 18, I think. Yes. When I, I was 18. But it was really poor and uh, not good music. Like, everyone, I think, has it. Uh, I had, like, uh, in that time, mm -hmm. I was... Uh, falling in love with drum and bass. I see. So, uh, preferably all things I did, it was like my first attempts to make a drum and bass, but it was bad. <laughs> but, uh, still, um, like, this is like the most powerful background I have. Okay. Drum and bass. Sure. Drum and bass, technical age, uh, evil intent, and uh, liquid music musicians, they are like my most strong background. Okay. And then, a leg came into my life and uh, um, inspired me to make uh, ambient drones because I'm like very active person. I like house music. I like everything dancey, sure. drum and bass. And he like calmed me down <laughs> and put the ambient and nature. <laughs> so when did when were you doing the so when you took the step from doing the more classical stuff to to the electronic, the drum and bass? What year was that? Was that like early 2000s yeah or early uh, no it's uh, i think late 2000s it was 2008 and 9 okay something. okay sorry I, I i don't know how old you are so i'm like i'm all it's over okay. the place. No, you know, i have the imagining of how old i am <laughs> sure sure um so what so, so you so you started doing the drum and bass and what was, was that just something that kind of arose, like just, a, a, that was just kind of a natural interest for you, just kind of after your, your classical training, you just wanted to go out and explore beats and just electronic soundscapes in something you really loved, or how did that? 
No, I just wanted to be a popular DJ girl that oh, okay. makes music. I see. That was my intent. <laughs> and how and how long how long did you do that for? How many years did you try and carve out that? Uh, I think right now is I, I'm still trying. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like from the uh, it it's like already almost ten years that I'm trying to oh, wow. be a very German basic girl. But just for, for now, like since I started uh, doing uh, dark ambient mm -hmm. and. Uh, all of this uh, more calm and quality stuff. It's like, I think, three or four years that I made a little pause that I don't like perform really often. Sure. I, I did it a, lo a lot. I was like, uh, in our circles in Kiev, uh, in Ukraine, I was a little popular for some time mm -hmm. because not many girls playing drum and bass here. Sure, okay. But uh, like, I. Um, uh, lost interest in this okay like yeah and started to make music more because it's really tough place where there are a lot of sexism there are a lot of uh, bad guys that you're working with they are not so organized and sometimes when you're a girl and boys they are more ravey and want to drink and have mm. like a lot of girls mm. and you're like just oh my god it's for music you're not uh, you will not be like consistently all the time in the party so okay yeah. okay so that so you but you so you you said you put that on hiatus a few years ago you haven't really gone back to it since you haven't really been dabbling in it too much um, no I uh, continued writing music okay. German bass but it's more uh, from the Oleg side Okay. Because uh, he, we have also Project Des, we have a, like few releases also, like drum and bass project. Oh. It's okay. dark drum and bass, like it's really hard. And uh, Alec does most of uh, music work, so he composes most of drum and bass. I'm now like put myself on pause because uh, it's not what I'm feeling right now, not so ready. But I feel that right now I. I'm going back to this uh, state of mind, so maybe we will do more together. I see, I see. And did you? Uh, yeah, and that was something I was gonna, I was a bit interested in as well, because as I was going through your catalog and writing, you know, I was trying to shape together a list of, you know, of all the work you've put out, and you put out quite a lot of stuff, like under Proto U you know, in like the last couple of years. And I was like, geez, I never realized that until I wrote it all out. Um, and I, I just find that really fascinating. Are, are you planning to kind of wean off of this project for a bit and go into other musical territories? Or are you going to continue, you know, putting out the same amount of music? As I think I'm going to continue. Okay. To put around because, um, for me and the like it becomes uh, more than just a hobby or making music for him it's uh, it's all also work because he works as a sound uh, designer oh in in yeah in okay. a it company okay so he makes sounds for a game so uh oh shit okay. music is really <laughs> quite quite a thing in our life for me now, not not now for me because um, I work uh, in musical thing, but not like musician, but a copywriter, a PR. I don't know how to say S SMM. Okay. Something like this. Uh, so for now, we're still having a lot of music in our lives. So I see. I th we will continue. Uh, I especially will continue doing music in the same amount that I do now. So uh, sure. the thing that I will do drum and bass will not uh, conflict with the, the thing, especially that we have a lot of other projects that we still man maintain right. and nothing others anything. So. Right. Okay. Going back, so so kind of the the origin of the project. I, I'm interested, kind of in you know the the name of the project as well as kind of how you like what was the inspiration for beginning this endeavor because you you broke onto the I, I don't know if you have any releases under proto you pre cryo chamber but I know you you dropped that that earth songs one with with Oleg and that was back in I don't have it written down in my notes right I can't find it it's somewhere sometime in like 2015 correct so the origin of the project is actually um, 
when I started to explore Johnny Darko's music because it was like way before we started dating and stuff. Sure. Uh, we were friends and I was exploring and started to fall in love with the music. So I thought that it would be cool if I try my musical skills in this uh, particular area. Okay. I, um, Actually, the name is really a funny story. I had an HTC phone back then, mm -hmm. and uh, when HTC phone was uh, uh, like had untitled name uh, as a Wi-Fi, he was showing uh, to um, uh, other devices. I don't know or Bluetooth or how how it it, it was called Bluetooth. Yeah, sure. uh, so it was showing to other devices as ProtoU. And uh, it it has also like few numbers, and I liked it. And also there is a game StarCraft that mm -hmm. has uh, a race, uh, Protoss. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I should have put one. I should have put that together. I didn't even realize. Okay. So yeah, I like that, and I like that uh, it uh, doesn't go with any female name. So it it is like. Uh, something unknown, something right. without gender, something right. that really is free and can create uh, without any boundaries or social limits. Sure, so, sure, sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. Like and no, I don't have any releases before the cryo. I only had like few, maybe three or four songs uh, on my SoundCloud back okay. then. It was not. It was really poorly like executed <laughs> a little bit, but uh, I think it inspired me a lot to work more because I listened to Johnny Darker's work and like think that I should be better. Yeah. And we together this Earth Songs album. It mm -hmm. uh, like I, I learned very much from Oleg. I saw, saw like what he's doing with track, how he's working with different effects, with diff different uh, presets. So okay. it made me think that I should work more, and so, so that was it. Okay. Actually. And w what was it about, or what is it about dark ambient that that interests you, or what kind of made you fall in love with it? What was you know kind of the the moment that it happened or what was what was it that really attracted you to it well actually uh like before again before journey dark i even didn't know about existence of uh, ambient music mm -hmm. as a genre uh, didn't know about dub techno as a genre so uh I saw that Oleg is really a kind of a person that searches for music a lot. He knows a lot of about some new music that is like out of boundaries and it, it is so attractive because uh, everything I knew, it was so not uh, completed like in the boundaries of music. So I started to explore and it makes, made me think that uh, ambient is one of the genres that has no boundaries at all. Right. Like it, it can be connected to anything, to the nature, to emotions, to some industrial things, to architecture, to everything. So uh, anything I feel I can reflect right there. That's why I like it so much because it isn't limited without some BPM, with uh, sure. some particular bass uh, or something. It's just something that is from the nature and environment. So. I see. Okay. Okay. And how did your um I don't know if talking about if you're um kind of diving back into your your background with classical stuff, but has that how did that have any particular influence on the way you, you know, you think about how to compose an ambient track or dark ambient track or how how has it influenced if you could you know gauge it in any way how has it influenced the way you composed our campion well uh i think that my violent trainings and love to drum and bass like uh, composed one uh, big picture with uh, my knowings of some harmonies with some particular solfeggio uh, things with notes and uh, it made me think that I could put like some melodic stuff into dark ambient sure. and like drum and bass made me uh, adding this I don't know bass is something really low right like 
right. making atmosphere. So together, it just uh, made me think that I uh, can use my uh, knowledges with uh, notes and sounds, uh, <laughs> com composing it with uh, drum and bass knowledge. So it, it just came out like this. I I, I, I don't know how. It actually influenced is just chaotic thing but it it really helped me to understand that i love music and uh, i can do music myself sure <laughs> sure sure and how so so how about the the earth songs kind of the you know the genesis of the project in a sense if that's a correct way of putting it how, like what was the interest there what was kind of um you know exploring you know, the Big Bang up through a little post our society, back, I think it was up in like 2100 something AD you ended in. Yeah. I, I can't remember the exact year, but what was the, why Why did you start there? Was there, like, what's your general interest in, you know, just kind of the concept, I guess? Well, I think um, it's like existential que question. It will be eternal for uh, humanity until we be like more fast into science than wars and stuff. Mm -hmm. That people all always want to explore what will happen, what was happening, what is uh, happening right now, and why should we save all the trees and stuff? Right. Uh, why the nature is here? So these questions made us think that um, we can reflect it in music. Okay. Uh, some kind of a history and uh, our intention so we see that uh, in the future people will explore galaxy more mm -hmm. we, we, we hope so because yeah. our planet is not uh, it will be not lasting forever right. <laughs> with this attitude especially mm -hmm. so we wanted to explore this story we wanted to put some industrial sounds in it so the things we see in life, the thing we uh, thought that uh, galaxy, that uh, universe sounded at all. Mm -hmm. So this is particular story is really great for me and the origin like uh, of uh, the album actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I had in mind the song of um, Michael Jackson. He mm -hmm. has like first song, maybe you remember, mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. old. And uh, this video, it made me cry where, when oh. I was a child because I saw f for the first time what people can do to the world. Sure. And uh, especially knowing that we don't know why are we here and why are we created, why we destroy what uh, is created right. for us. It was right. like a known for, for me and I think Alec is sharing my opinion. So we just wanted to explore this particular story and remind people that it is really important to uh, go back and understand that uh, we should uh, just maintain everything because it was like way before us. Sure. So. What was the, I, I guess, some of the, the sentiment as well with the latter, the last two tracks on that album, which I found interesting too, just in per, like just relative to the scope, because it seemed like that was kind of you projecting what you think is going to happen, or kind of your your sentiments. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I I recall there was kind of the singularity track and then departing Earth or leaving Earth and. I, I'm a little interested, you know, what the your your thoughts were on, you know, singularity, like black hole, that kind of thing. Like, what your, you know, or is that kind of you expecting us to kind of move on from the planet in the not too distant future, and you know, like we're gonna destroy it, or like what's the uh, the thing is that we will not destroy it actually, <laughs> we don't think so and we suppose uh, and we hope that people will be more thoughtful and try to sure. maintain the place because it's really beautiful and we don't know if there are uh, some kind of places like this and this is our safe zone. Right. So leaving Earth is uh, particularly the thing that uh, make us go out of the safe zone and explore some new worlds. So this is uh, our evolution, I think, our next step. This thing should uh, like make us think that are we alone here or something. So it's not a bad thing. Okay. It's just the natural thing, the natural yeah. uh, thing of, uh, I don't know, how, how it, it should be like in an in good way so if we are really smart and good civilization especially knowing that we don't use like 70 percent of our brain right right <laughs> yeah 
so this is just a natural thing and it's uh, a little bit sad because you're leaving your home like living earth but uh, it is good because you will explore something new and have a chance to see everything new and have a new stage in your life right. like in humanity life singularity is like something really unknown we don't know what it is what what is black hole what universe has in it what what is black matter or sure stuff. sure it's just our viewing of this unknown and uh, the willing to know what it is okay so I think okay no that's no that's yes. really interesting and then you had so after earth songs there was a bit of a i believe it was I mean, it wasn't a full year, but it was kind of closing in on a year. Then you released your Lost Here record. Mm -hmm. And what was, uh, I I recall reading a note that you wrote, or kind of like a a lengthy insight as to what that that represents. Could you describe that Mm -hmm. that record as well? Because I found that to be quite a compelling piece of dark ambient as well. Just like very dreamlike and very, like, just kind of your your thoughts and the feelings you were trying to construct or the world you were trying to construct with that record? Well, um, like another thing that uh, made me think a lot in my adulthood is our dreams, mm-hmm. how they're composed and how how they can go because um, like a lot of times I had bad dreams about sure. apocalypse, about uh, everything not so good. It, it's just my psychology. I, I'm just like that. So uh, the thing that sometimes I have like more consistent dreams that has no uh, particular like emotion or something. It just comes to some different place that I never been before, and I, I don't know how they appear at all. So this feeling that a person has when uh, it comes to like some unknown environment mm-hmm. within unknown sentiments and emotions this feeling made me think that there is something more to this world like sure. i don't know for sure because i'm not scientist and i don't uh, uh, refer to any of religions because it's not mine i'm just so neutral right. i'm just thinking there is something more and uh, these dreams they have to uh, they they uh, let um, this is like our second life right. so uh, lost here is like the second life or one of the thousand of lives we have right. like, so I wanted to just uh, with this album to reflect this feeling these emotions that person has when uh, they just come to dream to some un- unknown environment this uh, uh, feeling of being lost and found in in the same time so okay maybe, like, okay if, if this makes sense no no, no it does that's it makes plenty of sense to me so then i guess so so post so after lost here you had give me a second i'm trying to think <laughs> i'm trying to think through the chronology to discuss these in so so you have the the recent release that you put out on cryo chamber that came out just about uh, a little over a month ago that's the um the edge of architecture yes and that and I find that one interesting because after I was reading the the details of the record, so that so that is tied back to Earth songs in right. some way, right? And it, c- right. could you could you explore that or explain that a bit? Just kind of how they exist in the same universe, or how the ideas behind it are kind of connected. Um, actually, like uh, when we make was making our songs with like we were uh, intent to make some uh, you know sequels or stuff to, sure. to this thing so we could complete the story in future. Uh, so the Earth songs is particularly about nature and humanity, and the edge of architecture is uh, influence of industrial and uh, everything that human made like this last thousand hundreds millions of years right so this is incredible thing because uh, uh, the, it, it is like from my childhood it remains something unknown to me how people can make this kind of buildings how they can sure. make uh, some cars and stuff 
it is just amazing because a person uh, can make such an amazing things and still is so insecure about their potential. So mm. the edge of architecture is more uh, of exploring of what human can make. Okay. Uh, when the Earth songs is more like what the human uh, are living in, so about the environment and the time and everything. So this is about uh, one particular, um, like um, the w one particular uh, district of life. Of, okay. Of, of people of humanity at all. So architecture, especially after I watched uh, Blade Runner first and mm -hmm. second one. Yeah, and a lot of retro futuristic and futuristic films that uh, coming to my mind. Uh, it also makes me think that people are so unlimited in what they can create. I see. So this is actually the thing that I try to explore. Okay. But the, what they can create, and uh, we plan with like uh, others parts of the puzzle. So there will be like. This is one universe. This is our universe, right. actually. Right. So this is just uh, us exploring it more. Okay. <laughs> okay. And how? So so I'll probably have a. I'll, I'll get back to to that album in particular in a bit. But how do your other albums? So I know that this is in the same universe, and I apologize in advance for botching the name of this record. The the Kamoch. 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 Okay. Is yeah, it's Khmer. Khmer language. Okay. And is that, so is that album as well, because I listened to that and I found that one very engaging um, and interesting as well, kind of with the flute work and some of the kind of those, those Eastern, like those tribal textures. And is, is that also part of this, you know, this universe? I know it's not, it doesn't seem like it's directly tied to Earth songs, but it seems like that album and the Edge of Architecture, like you kind of have the you know, the more primitive side of humanity and the edge of architecture is more, the more modern side of humanity, but I could be drawing parallels that, you know, they may not exist there. Is that, you know, um, does it fall in that universe of yours? Well, actually, it could, but no, it's not uh, It's not connected like okay. with Earth and stuff. Okay. Uh, but it, it is about also about one particular district of uh, humanity. Okay. It's religion. It explores religion because uh, I was exploring exploring the history of uh, uh, Chiang Mai of these temples, ancient mm. temples. Okay. Uh, and all of them has a, a background that makes, I don't know, people die or something for the religion. Okay. For some just things also like you know like Maya that had a lot of uh, uh, different violent rules and stuff connected with religion so uh, and especially if you like saw the cover of Kmao mm -hmm. you see the god is really big and yeah. the person is small right. and uh, the god is uh, something uh, that is more for a person like having a big power and strength so it is worthy dying and stuff okay so this mouth is like exploring this Khmer religion thing that made a lot of people die a lot of people believe a lot of people uh, maybe change and stuff so okay. this is all about um, being a human that want to uh, believe so this interesting is also makes sense okay okay no that, that's very interesting so so kind of in a more general in a more general context when i listen to your music what i find really compelling about it is just the kind of like the overabundance and lush textures of field recordings and all the interesting sounds you weave into your soundscapes um and i i i'm sure that some other ambient artists i've stumbled upon use it but whenever i listen to your stuff it's very it's very like noticeable and it, it seems to really have like it's a very distinct sound and I, I was interested how one you you know you collect these field recordings of yours because I find that really I find that aspect interesting and I don't know much about it and then kind of what compels you or what what got you into integrating it so heavily into the sounds or the compositions you produce so maybe if you listen, when you listen to my music, you can 
sense and hear a lot of sounds that uh, is surrounding uh, us with the leg. Uh, we make a lot of field recordings mm -hmm. uh, using dactophones in forests in our particular district where we live. It's a little bit industrial and trashy, but okay. still it's, it's when the spring is beautiful. <laughs> right, right. Right, it's just not so good. Sure. So we try to. Um, make sounds of everything that comes and uh, we have a lot of transportation uh, that works in here so buses and stuff that work not so good also <laughs> and, and it helps us a lot because we receive sounds uh, up there that's not so good like ah, and stuff sure. and it helps because we can just put it like down 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 and, and it sounds good so Interesting. Uh, try to make field recordings of everything we feel and um, uh, explore like when we have been to Berlin mm -hmm. we also recorded uh, our talks uh, the environment the sounds of trains um, my voice because I sing a lot and uh, also we record it sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also do a lot of field recordings in forests when we, you go like steps on the different uh, kinds of uh, grounds sure. like um, on trees uh, on uh, grass and and stuff so okay there, there are a lot of things you can listen to something really beautiful and it can be a sound of our buses it, it calls march marshrutka okay <laughs> in, and, and, and it is really trashy, but still, uh, the sound they they make there like beautiful. Interesting. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. What's so compelling to me about your sound is just kind of how it it just feels so it just feels so organic when you listen to it. Like it just kind of dredges up some. Like whenever I listen to it, I get some very kind of dredges up memories or kind of makes it feel like a more alive world, not just kind of this caustic harrowing landscape like some dark ambient artists create um what was the what's the um i don't know how to ask that without because it because I, I just don't produce dark ambient music i i don't understand the you know like like when you when you incorporate these field recordings what is it that you're i don't know just how with how lush the sounds come through and how you you make it so prevalent in your field recordings what what gives you like what compels you to take that approach with your compositions as opposed to just making it i don't know like real synth heavy or anything of that sort is there something that you know drives you to to make it f sound more organic and feel more organic well it is like uh, the same maybe answer will be uh, as on your first uh, questions. Uh, it's our love to uh, ambient because of its or organicness and its re relation to the world. Okay. So uh, if I want to uh, create something that will reflect my feelings and emotions and the things that I experience, why should I put a lot of synthesizers right there? True. If I have it naturally and True. can record just work with it and just add my scenes so you have the full panorama in your ears so you can listen to what I'm living in sure and it is better in this way because there is uh, less synthetics mm -hmm. maybe it sounds not 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 so I don't know not <laughs> so uh, heavily not so dark and binty sure. and not black uh, uh, right. kind of thing. right but, but uh, it, from from my side of view, it really makes people experience what I experience, and this is the main thing for me, not uh, uh, not to reflect something fake. I just want okay. to be yeah. as natural as I can. Sure, sure, and sure. Yeah, that's why uh, I want people to have full panorama of nature and stuff I want to reflect. So okay. what I experience, basically, you will experience if you listen to my music. Okay, now that's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And how? So how about so on your your latest release, the the Edge of Architecture? How how was it composing that record? You know, relative to uh, to your your previous efforts, how how is 
like I, I guess this could be a more general question to the the evolution of Proto U and the project, but you know just just composing the edge architecture. How did you go about producing this record relative to say Earth songs or some of the your prior material? Well, uh, in Age of Architecture, I used a lot of help of Oleg because he um, he made. If you like compared it, you see that uh, it sounds more like uh, something more synthetic than sure. others. <laughs> yeah, and uh, here I wanted to explore what I can do with uh, synths and new presets that I have. What what I can make out of the grain delays and stuff. Okay. So this approach like I'm just uh, have to learn more like I, I know it and um, there is a lot of things that I can explore like uh, we have a lot of guys that made uh, uh, some workshops on how to generate synthesizer in max for life in mm. ambient it's really hard it, it looks like math <laughs> and I don't like math <laughs> but still it um, kind of thing that I want to explore so the edge of architecture it's like uh, I had more of a technical approach, I think okay. I wanted to be more uh, techy because I have more futuristic uh, kind of topic and uh, sure. Blade Runner. When yeah. I saw the, the last part, mm -hmm. there are a lot of industrial sounds that um, there are a lot of heavy scenes that I also love because uh, I um, have a lot of sides of my musical life and I also like heavy dance music. Sure house and stuff so I wanted to combine it and to make people uh, understand that I can do something more than just organic music with the nature and sure. the clouds and birds singing sure sure no, that's it's it. kind of a, okay I, I just want to learn more and to be like more skilled so sure sure no that makes a lot that makes a lot of sense and are you have you been seeing any of your music I mean, with the edge of architecture maybe going forward, are you seeing on a not too distant horizon like your music kind of morphing and taking a like a, a darker edge or taking any sort of like a more a more brooding tone, or do you generally like to keep it I don't know if light is the right word, but kind of keeping it a little more ephemeral, a little more, you know, organic sounding? Actually, I see that it morphs into something uh, combining a few components. Like, mm -hmm. I want it to be uh, more quality, more bassy, and uh, still organic, sure. though, because I still want to reflect this feeling that I was talking about, that uh, if you put your earphones, you hear what I hear. Right. And um, uh, in the future, I want to be on the light side. Bright side is better for me than dark side. Sure. But but sometimes maybe I would like to go and dive into some kind of a satanic world with demons. <laughs> sure. <laughs> just uh, is my uh, drum and bassy dark stuff. I did a lot of it, like in drum and bass, and I played a lot of dark music, and I like it also. But um, I just want to be on the light side. Maybe one time being a little devil, but still sure, sure. Uh, I want my music to be. Uh, good and beautiful and not to make people I know a lot of people use uh, uh, ambient as uh, Not not a remedy, but a thing to maintain their depression So I That's didn't want people yeah. because, because I was uh, like in some kind of the states not a depression But really bad 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 places So I don't want people to sense something bad when they are listening to my music Especially I don't want them to imagine their depression and then their darkest places so i would like to make some good with my music sure sure maybe just one time i would like to make something dark but uh, i just wanted to really contrast it dark okay not, I see. i'm not pressing and sad with uh, violence and stuff sure 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 and what 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 is it that um when folks listen to your albums is there is there something you is there some specific feeling i mean i know you said you want folks to be kind of immersed in the panoramic you know the world that you live in but is there another or is there a particular feeling or sentiment you want listeners to take away from your music or for each album do you is there something you just want people to to really take away from it 
Mm, I want them to take uh, away love. <laughs> what? Uh, that's what I want. Okay. So the, the love can be also dark, but sure. uh, in my sense, uh, what what I feel and what can really save our humanity is something bright and good. Sure. So I want people to feel the love. Maybe if also it's not not so it, it is cheesy. I know, but no. uh, I want people just to feel something good and uh, hope and love. So this is all connected things. Everything that makes life so good and worth living. I see. Yeah, I, 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 I'm interested too. I, I don't know. I, I have not heard that that sentiment you shared. I, I don't know if you'd want to explore it a bit. Just the, um, how folks correlate some of the the ambient music to to depression. I think that's a little. I, I've never, me personally, I don't think I've come across. I've not, I've not heard that. But then again, I don't, you know jump in as deep as some other folks do with with ambient music i try to but it's hard to to stay afloat in all this is that something that's is that a common thread you see kind of in you know the the dark ambient scene or i guess more like more broadly have from where you live how have you seen like like have you seen like an energy shift or anything and kind of the way folks approach producing ambient or dark ambient music mm -hmm. yeah yeah there is like uh, different people they're all talented uh, they're just different we have uh, a very uh, broad uh, stage of ambient musicians in Kiev they're all also different some of them they're like uh, more of them are men we have like maybe few girls in here uh, like making uh, uh, ambient and stuff <laughs> uh, but the boys I see uh, they are approaching uh, dark ambient with a more of a, a technical and uh, uh, I, I don't know no noisy approach so okay. uh, their feeling of ambience is uh, more of a uh, some atonal things okay they should do like they manipulate with sounds they have a lot of modular scenes that, that that's what what i don't have and okay. not planning to do in uh, the nearest future so uh, i see their approach they're all very serious and look like my mathematicians <laughs> to me sometimes but still they're really respective people i respect them a lot uh want to learn from them but take only necessary for me okay i'm not so serious sure. to, to the because they are i o o only explore like more of a synths and uh, the uh, presets i can use uh, i don't use modular synths and it's not not a thing for me at least for now okay. maybe in the future when i want i i will <laughs> like to grow up more sure maybe sure. i like to do this but I see this approach to dark ambient that uh, we don't have just here musicians that make very dark ambient music okay. that uh, I don't know some some people see them as satanists wearing black coats sure and stuff. sure <laughs> so Alec also is not like that <laughs> besides he it makes very dark music sometimes <laughs> but he's really positive and a good person with a really nice and positive approach to music similar to me but he just reflects different emotions I see. like he has also a noise project that ex explores sounds so he likes to morph sounds a lot Interesting. and this is uh, all about uh, ambient musicians they are all different but what i see in kiev they are all mathematicians in some way interesting so, okay just <laughs> uh, shoot. Um, well, well, I guess so, so. From from the the time you started, I the project till now. How have you seen it evolve? And have you where you are now? Kind of, I guess, if you wanted to look back on the last two three years since you've founded the project, are you in a spot? You know, in a in a headspace or in a place where you really didn't see yourself being at like how has the project progressed over the last couple of years and are you you know surprised or are there any like what have you you know just looking back are you are you just somewhere you didn't think you know are you in a place you didn't think you would be you know mm -hmm. in a few years since finding the project well actually i didn't think that it will go good a lot <laughs> like mm. 
at all. Uh, I just started making it for fun, for, for myself, for uh, making a leg proud. <laughs> and uh, I didn't even think I'm confident uh, on myself sometimes. But uh, I didn't think that people will like it so much and have such a positive feedback that makes me grow. Okay. So uh, I didn't even dream about it. It's just like all my kids' dreams in 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 one uh, project, uh, and I think that it's not um, a place I can stop. I have to evolve and work more because it's not a perfection. I know I can do more and better and uh, something more panoramic. Uh, yeah. So this, this is the area we can explore forever because uh, modern technologies they make a lot of things that uh, make drum dark ambient production more like beautiful and good and sure. simpler and uh, worthy of exploring something good like we have here a very good uh, um, ambient artist like not, not related to topic but it, it is good to say that explores the uh, physical side of ambient so he made um, a performance like a few months ago or like half a year ago uh, that um, there is a thing that puts on your head mm -hmm. that explores your alpha and beta waves from the mm -hmm. brain okay. and uh, he visualizes and sounds it so he like uh, compared uh, com I don't know how to say uh, made it um, um, work with the sound and uh, visual mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is something new and futuristic for us because only putting uh, this thing on our heads uh, we can see w what our heads sounds like so when you're okay. meditating it's more of a ambient and uh, good just just floaty sound okay. and depending on what you're uh, trying to uh, activate your brain or thinking more it becomes like chaotic and autonomous hmm. so uh, I see that uh, I can also explore some of those things so because I have a goal to immerse a, a listener more into my music right. and make some make some uh, unknown feelings uh, to refer some to some unknown and fantastic emotions sure sure that not limited in so I think that uh, that's what have to happen to me I have to explore something new and uh, with our modern technology and p potential it's it's so possible sure. <laughs> nothing is possible so. sure sure yeah and do you do you have any like sentiments or feelings on I don't know I, I don't know how to word this question because I've not really asked folks about it before but you know any anything beyond just like physical bodies like astral planes or anything like that do you have any sort of feelings that kind of I, I don't know like is there is there something that interests you or is there something that you want to explore that's kind of beyond just corporeal just kind of our human bodies that doesn't really you know like we can kind of get we can kind of feel it in passing but we we can never really attain it is that is that I don't know if I'm asking that in a stupid, in a real stupid way or not. No, it's okay. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Really, I understand. Um, as I said before, like the dream world when right. person just, I I know and I feel that there's something more than just a conscience making different pictures and stuff. Right. So I'm I'm not believing in any particular thing. I'm also not a scientist and sure, stuff. Sure. I want to believe that we are more than just a body with a brain right. and stuff. Uh, I know that we have some potential and something is beyond, like yeah. uh, all these astral things you so, uh, you talking about. Mm -hmm. it, it really refers to me and uh, what I feel, and especially with the Twin Peaks, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it uh, also came to me more because uh, I know a, a very famous person that shares my uh, views with the right. astro, with something more to a human uh, potential and uh, feelings and stuff. So yes, sure. this is my thing, and I'm surely I'm 
like hundred percent sure that there's something more. Right, right. In physical body. <laughs> right, yeah, and and from the perspective of, of your music, as you've started your project till now, or just over the you know the last few years, have you found with each release you kind of edge a little closer to this, or do you, do you feel like you've kind of become a little more connected to this? to this feeling with each release? Do you feel like you're kind of shaping it and you're kind of getting some, I don't know, do you feel like more tethered to it or more in tune with it in some way, if that makes sense? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, uh, yes, in different ways, I just explore this feelings and uh, different releases and music that I make, they uh, make different clues of mine that uh, w- what I think it can happen, what I think uh, you can feel and stuff. Sure. So I think it will evolve, it will change uh, if science will make some breakout. Right. Break, I don't know. Right, right. It will also change. So it, it is just changes not with uh, every release. I think it more changes with time. Okay. So okay. the time passing, the people writing stuff on forums and right. stuff. Right. So the great truth is on forums, not on on science and governmental stuff. So uh, what humanity is, humanity makes and what uh, it explores, it is uh, the the reason I uh, change and evolve my views. And music is just reflection. So how about I, I'm also interested. I've noticed you, or I've been seeing that you've done a handful of, you know collaboration releases with folks or you've done you know you did the the what is it the the tomb of druids you know you put you have a song on that one as well um how how do those projects generally come about because i i never realized how many collaborations you're on you have the one with uh you have that alpine respire one anything you have stardust and like how do those come about well, I was just thinking how I can uh, incorporate with some different people because you cannot um, just go out of your safe zone if you will do your musical always by yourself okay. or, yeah. or stuff. So I'm trying to um, communicate with people and see what what I can make of it mm-hmm. and uh, these things like Tomb of Druids is uh, just uh, a lot of uh, different people making different sounds but right. they're just in one topic and uh, we work together like as an organization team it mm-hmm. was really good and uh, interesting to know different uh, views of people how they work what is their timing how they make music and see this sounds like from the inside evolution it, it just makes you immerse more into people's uh, way of composition of composing music okay. so yeah. what you said how I approach uh, how I see this uh, ambient people so this is the way to communicate okay. this is the best way is, is to cooperate in some ways and um, I liked uh, a lot of work with Brian Hilliard because he mm-hmm. also into organic things yeah. he also makes a lot of field recordings and it's amazing and fascinating because he lives in a very beautiful place right. so uh, that's why uh, the alpine respired was like more uh, working with some uh, person that has the same approach mm-hmm. as, as me uh, in the same time uh, my uh, collaboration was off zone was more of out of my safe zone because he's making something like way out right. of my league uh, and uh, he makes something uh, very cosmic so it, it's good because it's like you're some kind of chemistry person right. science. it's combining different right. stuff and it's yeah in some way so th- this is this is all, all, all our collaborations but they are all different okay like in different way we collaborate and uh, it comes uh, surprisingly uh, good or s- not not what you expected but also good so uh, it's just um, co- co- collaborations are a really good way to surprise yourself with yeah. some results because it can be absolutely nothing that you expected. Yeah, and could, could you speak to, you know, maybe one of them? We don't have to go in detail on all of them because um, that, that may take a bit, but, you know, was there 
one particular moment or could you you know describe one of those moments that really were you surprised yourself listening to or like when you were trying to put a song together like when you really pushed yourself to you know to step outside your comfort zone do you is there uh i think it's uh, not uh, this co collaboration releases but uh, the um um Yoksa thought this is this oh, universe yeah. mm -hmm. uh, of, of these monsters and uh, this Egyptian particular monster that I made uh, uh, a track about um, and uh, it was like w way way out of my comfort zone because I tried to make something monstrous and dark mm -hmm. so, and this appeared re really really dark so I think that this is like the only thing that made me because this is collaboration this is like collaboration yeah. so we work with uh, different people and put uh, sounds of different people into something is consistent yeah. and uh, this this came out surprisingly dark and eerie right. for me right yeah and was there um I, I guess how I I guess I haven't asked anybody about that before on like those large cryo chamber you know when you that there's like a catalog of 20 artists working on that how how was it you know working on that was it quite intimidating to kind of step into this realm with so many people working on such a large massive piece or how, how, like how like what were the feelings behind that it's, it's um i think it's responsibility more okay like uh here you're in some way you are limited with your time and uh, abilities yeah. in some way it's not bad yeah, yeah. it's good it's discipline and uh, it makes you approach music differently so you can put it uh, in your music in the future it was not intimidating at all because okay. it was interesting and responsible great responsibility that, that makes me so honored to feel uh, sure. that I have uh, a thing with uh, this whole thing about um, a monster that uh, people know of right. a lot of people right. reading <laughs> stories and stuff yeah. so this was a really good lesson okay I would, okay yeah. and is, is there or beyond just the music you listen to are there other forms of media that influence your work like are, are there you know books or authors or pieces of art you know not, not maybe not music just any other form of art that really kind of influenced the way you compose music in any way i think uh, no it's it's where where uh i travel more okay that influence in my music not the media or stuff okay um because i had a lot of uh, my my mother she's very um, smart person. She is academic mathematician. I don't know why I'm not so smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, it's good. It, it's good because she taught me so many things, and um, there are some interesting part of her life. She explores Egypt a lot, hmm. and Egypt has a lot of legends and myths uh, that are really beautiful, right. but in the way are really intimidating, and also makes uh, refer reference to that astral bodies mm -hmm. <laughs> and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, it makes me... Uh, it, it is something beautiful, something uh, feminine and gold uh, and uh, intimidating in some way. Sure. So this influence on me uh, also very much and uh, I think in the future I will make something for my mom so she can I feel the in her ears <laughs> sure sure given that you travel so much as well is there one particular place that is it sounds like you 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 probably have multiple but is there one place in particular that like really struck you to the core or something that like really spoke to you um, was there, you know, was there one civilized, you know, lost civilization or some place you visited? Yeah, there is a place. It's Berlin. Okay. But it's not because of this lost civilization and stuff. Right. But because the city is like, uh, I feel there like at home. I don't, I don't know. This feeling is just so different for me because I, 
was traveling to different cities with Oleg and uh, I just felt that these are beautiful places because Oleg was the first person that uh, put me out of our country and showed me there's something more I than see. just Ukraine, yeah. Kiev and all the surroundings that are not so very beautiful but I hope it will change <laughs> sure. sometimes. But uh, Berlin is one place that talked to me as you said, because yeah. it's industrial, it's beautiful, um, it's dirty also, but it, this dirt is good, I think. And sure. we also been there to very, very famous festival, Berlin Atono, hmm. that um, gathered a lot of ambient techno musicians oh, in one building. Okay. Uh, Last Mort is performing there oh, right wow. now. Yes. Or, or performed there like a few hours ago, and oh, like just tonight, like yeah, tonight. Oh, he al already. Did oh wow! It. I think it's, it was like seven p.m. or something. Oh wow! And um, yes, the Berlin and particularly this location, it is really beautiful. It is industrial, but inside, in some way, it looks like church. Hmm. So okay. This particular place talks to me a lot, and. Um, this is maybe one place uh, in the world that I feel so like at home. Sure. So maybe it, it makes sense and uh, will make a future home. Maybe right. Sometime. Sure, sure. Maybe yeah. I don't know. So. Interesting. And how about the um, the live setting? Because like I've I've seen some clips on Facebook. This that and the next thing about you know you performing live or doing some of your you know your drone ambient work how how is that because over here in, in the united states where i live at least there's not a huge scene you know like there aren't a lot of ambient shows and things of that sort and i know that that's a lot more prolific or that occurs a lot more in europe or at least that's the impression i'm under but from your perspective playing live how is how has that been i think it um like uh, I didn't perform with the same uh, setup all the time. Mm -hmm. um, like for for the most of the times I performed, I only had a keyboard and uh, Ableton. Oh, okay. And uh, was making, uh, I was uh, playing my tracks and uh, uh, making d different uh, layers of my tracks and just uh, morphed it with some other tracks. Uh, but now, like a few less few less um, performances i was using my keyboard again i was using a, a sound card and also a microphone because i have a good voice and i can use it sometimes because sure. uh, it's beautiful when it is on reverb and uh, delay mm -hmm. and uh, i play everything live i just have uh, different synths and presets and maybe maybe some of them layers of tracks also lay there, but I just combine it live because this is the whole other uh, thing that just to write music because here you have instruments, here you have uh, time to do this, and here you don't have any time. People are just watching you right. and you make it all live. You make it all morph. It's like uh, adrenaline in some way, sure, and sure. it's kind of setup when you have a lot of keyboards. Maybe for now, as I said before, not modular because I'm not familiar with them and sure. I'm not for now. And I think it's more for techno, yeah. like it's more yeah. for some dynamic music, not uh, some dark ambient. Uh, but uh, I think I will use more of different controllers in the future because it would be good to uh, have a, more opportunities with light. Sure. So sure. as much. Uh, you don't need like I don't know put uh, a big keyboard and stuff. You uh, just need uh, your knowledge knowledge with the um, Ableton and few good MIDI MIDI controllers and stuff. Okay, so. okay. And I, I guess I didn't touch on this, and I I should have asked earlier. But do you so when you compose? your songs or like even on your most recent release do you use your voice frequently in any of them and like does it kind of become like one is do you use it as a layer in many of your compositions or is that something you usually just bring into a live setting um i think uh, that you heard it a lot of before but you just don't know if 
if this is my voice for sure. That's because, and that's why, like, I'm, yeah, that's why I'm interested because yeah. now it's like, oh, yeah. it's opening up my my. I'm like, oh, now I need to go back and listen and try and pick it apart if I can if I can figure it out. This sounds are really hidden, and you can uh, hear it just as eerie sound in the background right. or bass or a part of a melodic sure. thing. But uh, now you can go to my SoundCloud. I have my uh, last track uh, on SoundCloud, Astro Vins, mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. listen to it and you will listen to my voice directly because I have their like more uh, vivid and mm -hmm. uh, is um, more as a basis uh, of a track than in other tracks. So if nice. you want to listen to my voice, you can listen to it. And that and that's under Proto U as well, or is that under one of your other projects? No, it's under Proto U. Okay. You can find it on my SoundCloud okay. page. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Cool. And are you are you anticipating? I mean, I I obviously haven't listened to the track, but going forward, are you ex are you looking to maybe incorporate your voice? more yes. at the forefront of the compositions? Mm, no, for forefront uh, is maybe not so often because okay. uh, ambient is still about uh, nature but not my voice. It's just sure. a beautiful editing sometimes. But I have another project, a few different projects. Yeah. Uh, one is side chill, one is uh, just psychedelic, and okay. one is uh, house music so there will be more, more of my voice and it will be more like pop sounding okay so yeah and uh proto you i plan on using the sound as an instrument but not as a prime uh, prime thing in tracks it's just a beautiful adding and uh just another instrument i have so sure <laughs> i can use it sure sure yeah. could you recommend folks a few artists or a few like just to kind of keep information flowing through like music scenes to try and i don't know like just discuss more about like are there just albums or folks that you've really been enjoying that other folks can go check out to kind of just continue building the network of you know the ambient scene or just to, to talk about it a bit more i don't know if that's a good way to end it that's what i usually like to ask yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's super because uh, I have a lot of suggestions right here. I would suggest uh, to explore our Ukrainian scene because it's really beautiful. We have here uh, Vashenko. Okay. He has this is his uh, name and this is uh, the person I was talking about where when I was talking about uh, the brain activity and sounds yeah. and those it's really talented and uh, very famous in, in Kiev, Ukraine. So, um, I would like people to check him. Okay. Uh, also, uh, there is a person that n not in dark ambient and stuff. Uh, it it's dub techno, but mm -hmm. I like her melodies and stuff. She's uh, making really beautiful music. Theodore. Okay. Maybe like musician uh, making dub techno. Also mm -hmm. Red Fog. Okay. If you know such a person, he has uh, also very eerie and uh, beautiful soundscapes. Hmm. Um, also, Yuta Takahashi, if you know, there, there was like, this is a Japanese musician. Okay. okay. He makes also atmospheric uh, ambience, but it, it's more, more for med meditations, but still okay. really good. Also, Dirk Serie, he makes uh, guitar drone. Also, it's very good. Okay. And Steve Roach. Steve Roach, I think everyone knows, yeah, but yeah. okay. it's good to remind that he's a good fellow. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Johnny Darker, for sure, because <laughs> his music is so inspiring, like for me. <laughs> No, 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 that's perfect. Yeah, but if there's anything, is there anything in particular that you want to discuss about the project that I may have glazed over, as I, I usually, I can't catch everything, but is there anything in particular you want folks to, to know about your project, or? Well, actually, I think we spoke a lot about it, yeah. and I, I don't know, I think we explored uh, a lot of things, and... Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't like to add something, just uh, would like to be 
people to inspire themselves and make music because it's good to know uh, to recognize and to get to know people by their music so I just want them not to be scared and uh, just go out of their comfort zones and make music because it's really simple we now live in such a century that allows it to every person so every person can just uh, re reveal their potential and I would like that because uh, it is uh, really in harmony with what I think uh, the world should look like. <laughs> sure, for sure. Thank you very much for taking the time to, to speak with me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me.
Oh.